But I was asked to come and speak about the impact of prop tech. And I think the most important thing to do right now is to define what prop tech is. Well, what is truly impacting that? Financial analysis around real estate is nothing new. That's historic to the industry. So I thought a good example to understand the impact was to look back at the most impactful technology of the past decade. And that is the smartphone. We know it's the most impactful technology because most of you are looking at yours right now instead of looking at me. So we know that it's really changed the way that we live our lives. And so I want to take you through a few examples and show you how that might, how we expect that to change things in our world. These have changed the way that we live. We use them for everything. It's changed the way we eat. I love this one. In Hong Kong, we have a saying, we say the camera eats first. So we can't even sit down to a meal anymore without the phone getting in the way of something that we have to do to survive. It's changed the way that we don't talk. So a lot of us will text somebody and say, hey, can I call you real quick? But we still call this device a phone. Ride hailing apps are changing the way that we move. So we've talked a lot about that, about the sharing economy. And I'm going to come back to this when we zoom in on Vietnam. But there, these ride hailing companies, they're not just helping people get from point A to point B. They're using these platforms to develop technologies to map our roads. And this is going to be a really important part of Vietnam's growth overall. It's changed how we pay, so digital payment systems. We think about some of the challenges that have caused digital payment systems to emerge. It's changed the way we see our world, and that's a really important thing. The camera in the phone was originally a novelty. It was a way that I could take a photo and have a, uh, a picture of the contact of the person that I had. A lot of you today have been using your cameras to capture some of the information that you want to have to reference later. And so it's really changing how we interact with our world, um, especially through things like computer vision. Smartphones have only really been firmly entrenched in our lives for about eight years. What we've seen, what we see the change being, is that we're working in an augmented age. So when we think about the augmented age, the agrarian age was man and beast working side by side. What's really important right now is data, right? So we look at, I mentioned the ride hailing apps, but 10 years ago, a little over 10 years, now 12 years ago, the biggest companies in the world were energy companies. And so this parallel data being the new oil is quite true for this augmented age. Now, the biggest companies as of 2016, this really has only shifted ExxonMobil down, are all data companies. We know that Apple is, we know that Google is. A lot of people think of Facebook is just a way for once the camera eats first for us to share it so that no one cares what you have for lunch. But in reality, we know after this past couple of years that Facebook is really and truly a data company. And the quality of that data is what's going to influence the prop tech market at large. When we look at the overall sort of market outlook or how we think this is going to change things, what it's really changing is how we live our lives day to day. So for us at JLL, this is why Nalim can come up here and talk about alternative asset classes like co-working and co-living. It's because work and life are more and more integrated. So this is actually an older slide that I have that talks about the evolution of technology, uh, specific to prop tech. The rise of websites and online portals, classifieds came around 2007. Think about in the US, Zillow, um, in Southeast Asia, Property Guru, online listing sites are more than 12 years old now. So again, we overestimate the impact over two years, we underestimate it in 10 years. So when we say Internet of Things, a lot of people think sensors and small devices, but every phone, every smartphone that's in our hands is IoT, it's talking to environments. Go on Google Maps and look for wherever you're going for lunch today, and just scroll down a little bit and it will tell you how busy that place is hour by hour. That's the Internet of Things talking to devices and giving us information and feedback on how property is used. Uh, virtual and augmented realities. 
Uh, we think about virtual reality, we can imagine that, we can imagine being in spaces, but where we're seeing some amazing applications, including a project I'm working on, is augmented reality. Being able to take a mobile device up to something in a, in a property and inspect it and log the data around it, or to get instructions how to repair it, or to be able to report an issue. A lot of issues in buildings and out in cities go unreported because everyone else thinks everyone else is going to report it, right? So if there's damage to something in a building, someone has to take their time out and feed that information. But we're creating new conveniences through these augmented realities to just let people log those things. A lot of that investment, not from our property or from our venture capital, but just the overall venture capital is coming to Asia. So for around 60% of the total prop tech investment has come to Asia. And I'm going to show you how that breaks down. In Asia, more of it's coming to Southeast Asia than China. China has 1.3 billion people. It's one of the biggest economies in the world. So why is this happening? It's happening because in China, prop tech is not prop tech. China has become such a tech integrated society that there's not a lot of differentiation between whether it's property tech, it's fintech, or it's just sort of evolved out of a hyper-connected society that is there. So again, statistics are kind of lying, and kind of can be misleading, even though it's not intentional. And one of the nice things about why data is so important is we're getting better and better at isolating those statistics and understanding them. But investment capital is not innovation. Simply throwing money at a problem will not solve problems. We need to sort of actively understand what the problem is we're trying to solve. Southeast Asia, when we look at it in the macro picture, it's the youngest, sort of least mature market in Asia uh, in terms of prop tech. Uh, when we look at the, the players in the prop tech game, it's really property guru is the most entrenched or established standalone prop tech company. It's really the only true prop tech unicorn from Asia so far. And then, of course, Singapore, in many ways, leads the way, but a lot of that is because we're basing this on, again, on investment statistics, not necessarily how the product has an impact. A couple of big challenges for Vietnam. Number one is traffic congestion around prop tech. And why does that create a challenge? What does traffic have to do with things? Well, it changes you know, the level of access that people have to a built environment. A lot of technology requires a lot of upfront capital. So if, a, if the access to a building is very limited, or if people getting around a particular area is not good, that's when, why would, a, why would a developer spend extra money to create all of these enhancements if they don't think people can get to it? That is changing, and a lot of that's because of these emerging technologies, like rideshare. We're going to see more and more of that, because technology is being started in the US, but again, it's technology looking for problems to solve, not understanding the users. And so we'll see more partnerships across similar markets within Southeast Asia where the people understand their users and they're solving their problems. Thank you.